Chris and this is my voltmeter ammeter video. So this is a 70 Chevelle. It does not matter what kind of car you're working on. I'm going to show you where exactly to wire in. The voltmeter is real simple but the ammeter is the one that confuses a lot of people. Okay so we got to explain some stuff and draw some wire diagrams and then we'll come out here and wire it once we understand it a little bit better. Okay so the voltmeter is super easy and wired in parallel. We'll show it but the main focus is on this guy right here. Cars that had ammeters in the dash they usually had a minus, a plus, and a zero in the middle. So whenever this needle is above zero, it's charging the battery. And whenever it goes below zero, it's discharging or using the juice from the battery. So if you're driving your car with an ammeter and it's anywhere right here, your battery's just eventually going to die. Turn the ignition on, drops down, turn the headlights on, drops down a little bit more. As soon as you start your car, it charges the battery. It's supposed to be above zero. And that's what you want so when I think of old cars I think of cars that use mechanical ignition usually they have a coil and a points distributor and back then they had generators on those cars and then they went to an externally regulated alternator this is an external regulator you pop the top even though this thing is old it's still in good shape and works so on those old generator cars I guess that the generator would quit charging or something would happen where they would have to tune these up I never adjusted one of these but i would imagine that during tune-ups that you would get in your car start it up turn every single thing on ac radio lights and you would see where that needle was and then you would adjust it until it went above zero and then when you turned everything off it would jump up turn everything back on but as long as you got above zero, that's where you want it. We understand that this is the amp meter. It measures current in amps. So anything that had an external voltage regulator for the alternator or generator, they used amp meters because this thing could be tuned. So whenever they started putting the internally regulated alternator, they would go away with this and start using the voltmeter. Okay, so it is 2018, so running an external regulated alternator is kind of pointless, especially if you're building your car. The problem is that a lot of cars have these in the dash, and that's why I'm making this video to show you, show you how to correctly wire yours up so that you have a, a gauge that actually works in your car instead of one that just does nothing. So we're gonna go over the basic wiring, and then we're gonna draw a real quick diagram of the car in two different situations so that you can try to figure out where you need to connect yours. So when you search this, you see the shunt. And the confusing thing is it has a minus and a plus on it, but both little studs on the ammeter are both run to positive. Okay, so I'm using the shunt because you see this on other videos, but on a car, you're using two points in the charging system as the shunt. So you don't run a shunt, anything like that in the car. So these are little lugs that you can wire to. And you can see that the, the ammeter is wired right into the shunt. Okay, so on these GM cars, it's also confusing because these wires are both 12 gauge and black. Well, at least on my 70 Chevelle. The whole idea of wiring this up is you want all the draw, everything that's pulling off of the system in between the two leads of that ammeter. We would wire and fuse off of this. So this goes to the dash, this goes to an amp, and everything that's pulling off of the system, the ammeter is gonna be wired around it like that. So that's the big battery cable going to the starter, and it's gonna have a 10 gauge wire. Run over here to this side, 10 gauge wire that split up, it ran on both sides. So if you did wire, let's say you did use a shunt in your car, and wired everything off like that, it would be perfectly fine. We have an adequate alternator on there, and we would be charging right above zero. So this is the idea of how the ammeter is wired. Now we're gonna draw a quick diagram of my car, show you where it's wired on my car, and then GM did a little switch up in 72, show you that so that you can hopefully get a real good idea where you wanna set your ammeter up. So this is 64 through 71 Chevelle style. This is the core support where the radiator is. So the reason I showed this is because we're going to be using two components in our charging system, the junction block and the horn relay, as a shunt. So on my car, it has the big cable, goes to the starter, and it has a 10-gauge wire that comes off and goes straight to the junction block. It has another 10-gauge wire ran from that junction block over here to the bus bar on the horn relay. So on the Chevelle inside the dash, they don't have 12-gauge wires 
run to the fuse box but if you add one or do something like that make sure you run at least 12 gauge so these go through the fuse box so then one of the ammeter leads connects right there with the fuse link the other lead fuse link and is connected right here to that junction block and then everything that's going to power the car is run here with fuses or fuse links going back in there to power everything okay so if you're going to add like an amplifier that's what i talk about in my videos you add them fuse them from right here you don't want to fuse it from right here because that could throw everything off and maybe give you a false reading i'm not 100 percent sure i think it might just read the same but factory engineers wired up like this so that's how it should be done okay so in 72 gma bodies they changed everything up they put the horn relay on the firewall and then they did away with the junction block so that's the big cable to the starter solenoid and this 10 gauge wire that came off of the battery cable no longer went to the junction block it went to the lug on the alternator okay i'm not sure in 72 if they had the fuse link but they came off of the starter sending this back over here 10 gauge wire that's how they got power to that horn relay and of course the horn relay fuse link goes in here to power everything so now we got our two leads and this is where it gets super duper confusing as they ran this lead over here with a fuse link to the starter right there and so pretty much what you can get from this is if that lead is going to the starter solenoid straight to the battery then you could run it to the alternator but i do not recommend doing that just because the way it looks unless your car may have possibly been wired like that from the factory the only reason I'm saying that that would be okay because it may be di difficult to get under there and wire that if you just wanted to get it working for now and then later go back and wire it the correct way. But you see what they did, it's, there's nothing difficult about it once you kind of see the way it's wired. They just switched it up in 72 and this one right here confuses so many people because you know, you're not used to seeing all these wires going straight to that solenoid like that. But. So the whole point is you just want everything that's pulling a draw on the system in between the two leads of the ammeter and it should work 100%. Now let's get ready to put this on the car for real, in real life. Chris Craft's tip of the day is learn it so you don't burn it when wiring an amp meter. So you don't catch your car on fire, cause an explosion and become like this guy, a dunce. A voltmeter is the same thing as this. Super simple to wire in, got ground and positive now this has to be wired correctly that's what i always do to them just to make 100 percent sure i don't screw that up the voltmeter is used for internally regulated alternators all one wire alternators are internally regulated so the voltmeter has ground positive you wire the ground anywhere on dc the chassis is ground ground it anywhere it does not matter but usually on these little gauges, you're going to run little lights to them. So you're going to have a ground uh, come in here for the light. So that's where I always run the ground. Just right there to the light. But I like to run this one back to somewhere more like the radio. But it really doesn't matter. This is wired in parallel. You can get positive from anywhere and negative from anywhere. Super simple. So when you're wiring your amp meter, you absolutely positively have to use American wire gauge 10, stranded wire. You do not use no solid wires. When you run your amp meter, you need a fuse. I got these for $2 a piece. They come with 30 amp fuses in them. That's way too much. You don't need that. We got some here with some 10 amp fuses. So if you don't feel like buying any of these, you at least need to buy some of these. Don't waste your time with the fuse link. This is just like an undersized, probably a different material, like inferior wire. It just burns up before the rest so i don't like fuse links at all but whatever buy you some kind of fuses if you don't want to do this we can make something up with this get you a covered one use the correct yellow ones 410 gauge wire you cannot play around these this has to be the right size but if you had to make a bootleg one it's better than nothing let's make the bootleg one can't don't have any of these covered ones just wrap one really good you get the idea, it's super simple, just 
Go buy you that stuff. Put a fuse in there if you can't. Do something. So this is a 70 Chevelle, just like the wiring diagram. There's the horn relay with the bus bar. So there's the battery with the 10 gauge wire running off. And there's the junction block. We're gonna use those two points to wire in our ammeter. If you don't wanna buy one, at least make something like this. You have to have a fuse right there. So the only dangerous part about hooking this thing up is that you want to hook it up to your two points last. Get everything ran through your firewall. We're gonna hook this up and connect it last. We're just using this little gauge pod right here so you can see everything and how it's wired. So we got our 10 gauge wires with the correct ends. Make sure your battery is disconnected. Make sure you have a fuse on each lead of the ammeter. We're gonna fuse right here. We're gonna attempt to get it on that little stud. We got one done and those connections, they gotta be tight. So we're zoomed in on the horn relay. Got our little fuse. Okay, so it's just like that for the video. But you see how everything that comes off of here is fused. So when you run your ammeter, you got one point there, one point there. Everything that's taking a draw is in between those. So we don't want to run anything off of our battery right here. That's why I talk about not doing that. It's on these older cars. You don't want to do that. In all the videos I've made, this is the first time I'm ever using Zoom. Never even crossed my mind until now. So if you're going to buy an amp meter like this, you don't want one with 60 amp range. You want one with more like a, a 10 or 15 amp range where it actually show increments of one amp instead of increments of 10 amps. Now we're going to turn the ignition on and we're going to turn the headlights on and we're going to watch it drop just below zero but just a tiny bit. So it just barely went down and when we start the car it's going to go back above zero. That's why it's not really a good idea to use an ammeter on internally regulated because the job of that internal regulator is just to charge the alternator, whether it's charging it a tiny bit or a lot. So the reason the ammeter is not showing that much is because you see our voltage right now when we start charging, it's only, this alternator is not charging that good. It's only charging like 13.3 volts. Let's just make sure that when it starts charging, it's going to jump up just a tiny bit. Okay, so this is the 70 Chevelle. See how this one only goes up to 40. So this one should read a lot better. So we turn our ignition on. It's going to drop down a little bit. We're going to turn the headlights on. It's going to drop down. See? Then we'll start the car and it'll start going above zero. Okay, so we have an internally regulated alternator, so we use a voltmeter. So we turn it on. 12 volts and we start it and it'll start charging. Internally regulated, you use a voltmeter. So let's go wire it up. It's super simple. You can wire it to anything. Okay. So the voltmeter is the same thing as this. Wired up with 18 gauge wires. We're gonna go ahead and put an inline fuse. We can get power from anywhere internally regulate alternator this is all you need i'm going to say that like 50 times in this video because i see a lot of people with late model cars that are for some reason trying to put an amp meter on there you don't use that you don't need it that's why i marked it negative and positive so we're in the car we don't have to search for anything so to run the voltmeter you can run it anywhere just like you would run this anywhere to check voltage you can run this anywhere we're just going to connect it to the battery. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so how I wired the voltmeter into my car, it's in my auxiliary uh, gauge video. Uh, the little lights to your gauges has a constant ground, so I wired the ground right into that. But since they only come on with, with lights, I had to wire this to the radio. So this is just grounded to the auxiliary gauge lights, and this is ran up to the radio to run my voltmeter on my car permanently. So that looks good. 
12.59, just right above 12 and a half. And when you wire this, you wire this on with the key. That's how come I wired it to the radio in my auxiliary gauge video. Now we're going to uh, turn the car on and we're gonna see if uh, see it charge. You see how everything's wired up, it works 100%. Just the main thing is do not wire an ammeter to ground because i think that's what this guy did right here so well that's it for the video if you enjoyed please like and subscribe thanks for watching